Value viewers, I hope you are all doing very well. This video covers the Uncle Sam's Railroad, the USRA 2882 Malay. Enjoy. The USRA 2662 was never as popular as its 2882. Before dissolution of the USRA, a total of 80 2882 Malays were distributed to three roads. The Norfolk and Western, the Carolina, Clinsfield and Ohio, and you guessed it, the Virginian. By comparison, only 30 2662s were built for all time, with 10 going to the Wheeling and Lake Erie and 20 to the Chesapeake and Ohio. And not by coincidence, all five roads listed above were coal haulers in the Appalachia. Because the 2662 had approximately the same axle load as the 2882, the light Malay was not for those roads with weight limitations, but for those unable to handle the vertical and horizontal clearances of the 2882. The 2882 represented the largest of the standard locomotives built for the USRA and represented the limit to which a locomotive can be built to come within the maximum clearance limitations set by the Railroad administ Administration, which is 15 feet 9 inches high and 10 feet 9 inches over cylinders. Originally, the Norfolk and Western was allocated 50 2882s, and of course these were exact copies from Elko. Also in 1923, two Western railroads, the Northern Pacific and the Denver and Rio Grande, ordered copies of the USRA Heavy Malays for heavy tonnage service on its steep grade. The Carolina Clinchfield in Ohio was, like the Virginian, a trans-Appalachian road with liberal clearances, with both roads being constructed in the 20th century. The Clinchfield, as it was later known, received 10 2882s from Baldwin in 1919 and 10 more in 1923 from Alco. The delivery of these 2882s was made in the face of the roads already owning 2882s of its own design, which were delivered by Baldwin at about the same time as the government 2882s of 1919. And these 20 Malays of the USRA design became the backbone of the CCNO's roster until replaced by diesels in and around 1952. Much like the Virginian Railroad, the CCNO was sensitive to the fact that although it was a little railroad, it was built to the highest of engineering standards and could put in service the largest locomotives ever built. And thus, the USRA copies of the 1923, though identical to the originals in most respects, were made with higher smokestacks, bigger cabs, and a large steam and sand domes, showing to all the world that the road's many tunnels had no effect on vertical clearances of even the biggest government locomotives. If not in the actual design of the light and heavy USRA malaise, politics was possibly a factor in her allocations. And this conjecture goes back to the fact that in operating the nation's railroads, the USRA appointed regional managers. Norfolk and Western, Chesapeake and Ohio, except its line through Indiana to Chicago, and the Virginian were at first in the eastern region. On June 1, 1918, the three roads were given their own region when eastern was divided into the eastern, the Allegheny, and the Pocahontas. N.D. Maher, president of the Norfolk and Western at Roanoke, left his post to become regional manager of the Pocahontas, also headquartered in Roanoke. And besides his possible influence on officials in charge of decisions, the Norfolk and Western had two of its engineering staff working on the so-called Railroad Committee, whereas the Virginian in the Chesapeake and Ohio had absolutely zero the only direct evidence of this is in the Virginians' initial resistance at having to take the USRA's 2882s and the CNO's refusals to give its USRA's 2662s the same status as its own 2662s. The Norfolk and Western badly needed a powerful lo type locomotive to haul coal over its steep grades on its busy Pocahontas division. And it had devised a 2882, which was fairly a new wheel arrangement that could move over branch lines in the coal mine tipples and then take this coal up the Elkhorn grade to Vivian. And that's where electric lo locomotives would take the coal onto Bluefield. 
The 2882 of 1918 and 1919 would have also been the chief locomotive taking coal east over the grades of the Allegheny Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains. However, problems with boiler and firebox design made the new class Y2 a relatively poor steamer. So the USRA Railroad Committee, demonstrating how well it worked under pressure, took the bugs out of the Y2 and created for the N&W a 2882 tailor-made for the N&W's steep grades, sharp curves, and heavy, heavy tonnage of the Southern Appalachians. The transformation of the Y2 to the Y3 is interesting. Its driver diameter, low and high pressure cylinders, bore and stroke, grade area and weights are very similar enough to prove kinship. Nevertheless, the USRA design was a success. While the Y2, until rebuilt around 1921 to the class Y2A, was a poor steamer, mainly because the boiler was too big and the firebox too small to produce a free steamer. And the Norfolk and Western believed the USRA design of the Y3 was considerably superior to the Norfolk and Western's Y2 design. Without having to dive deep within the diagrams and blueprints and whatnot, sure evidence of superiority of the Y3 USRA design over the Norfolk and Western's Y2 and even after the improvements producing the class Y2A is the service life of both classes. 17 of the 31 class Y2A 2882s was sold to Western Roads during World War II, and the remaining 14 was scrapped between 1948 and 1951, long before the advent of diesels on the N&W. In contrast, 31 of the original USRA Y3s after sale of 19 for service during the war, continued into service until 1957 to 1958, when diesels were rapidly at that time replacing all steam. However, a major improvement the Norfolk and Western made to the basic design of the USRA 2882 was reducing back pressure. Back pressure was produced by steam that could not be exhausted completely from the cylinders before the power stroke began. And this was always a problem with a low-pressure Mallet system. Back pressure was reduced somewhat by increasing the, di the diameter of the low-pressure piston exhaust valve to 18 inches and by redesigning and enlarging the exhaust pipes into a bridge configuration between the front cylinders. These alterations to the front end and exterior made for the greatest change in appearance of the 2882s over the years. For the frame, running gear, boiler, domes, and cabs still mostly retained the USRA look. Over the years, many railroads receiving USRA locomotives initiated improvements either by building originals or ordering copies with alterations, but no improvements were extensive or as telling in terms of performance as those made by the Norfolk and Western from 1919 to 1952 with its 2882s. Norfolk and Western Authority Egg King cites figures to substantiate its performance. The Y6B personified the last word in Norfolk and Western's development of the compound articulated. It was basically a modified USRA 2882, but with those 30-year-old uh, years of well-thought-out refinements, it was a formidable machine capable of 5,600 drawbore horsepower at 25 miles an hour and a maximum starting tractive effort in simple of 170,000 pounds. Although no original USRA 2882 survives today, one of its copies does, and that would be the Norfolk and Western's number 2050, a 1923 Alco product of the NW's Y3A class. It is on display at the Illinois Railroads Museum in Union, Illinois. So with that, the following specifications apply to the USRA's 2882s built by Alco and Baldwin. Total produced was 106 original design plus 116 copies. The main driver diameter was 57 inches. The adhesive weight over the drivers was 474,000 pounds. The locomotive weight was 531,000 pounds. The fuel type was coal. The boiler pressure was 240 PSI. The cylinders were four, two low pressure front and two high pressure in the rear. The high pressure cylinders were 23 inches by 32 inches. And the low pressure cylinders were 39 inches by 32 inches. The USRAs used Baker valve gears, the locomotive brakes were air, and the train brakes were also air. The tractive effort was 101,300 pounds, and as I mentioned, just one copy, the Norfolk and Western 2050, is preserved. The rest were scrapped. 
And with that, I'll wrap up this video, and I shall thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button. And also, if you've not subscribed, please do so, as both features help my channel grow tremendously. Turn on all of your notifications if you want to see everything that I upload. That's once or twice a day nowadays. And also visit our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited at Etsy.com if you want to help support the channel in that way. And we thank you very much.